So here we'll be discussing about the result options. There is another value that is supported by result options here in parameter and the value is all compensation changes per day. And this is the one that we will be discussing in this particular session along with one other value, uh, conjugate fields only. So we'll be discussing these two values of result options in this particular session. So coming to the slide points, so result options can be used to switch between different options on how much data is to be returned in the response of the compound employee API. There are multiple values that can be provided for result options. And here we are discussing all compensation changes per day. So again, all compensation changes uh, as uh, our compensation rather similar to the job changes that we discussed in the previous slide is an MCPD enabled entity. That is, it has got multiple changes per day that it can record. So here in, day, in a particular day, there could be more than one record that could be available for this particular entity. So going to the slide points here. So if specified, the API returns all compensation information time slices that result from multiple compensation changes per day. So this is specified then it will be returning all the compensation slices that are there for that particular day, not only the latest one, which is basically outputted when we execute a call without this particular parameter. So as a result, the consumer can see historic changes and events that trigger these changes. The parameter value is only supported with full transmission and snapshot mode. Please note that the UR names are case sensitive. Uh, that is what we are aware of now. And also the parameter value is only supported for the full and the snapshot mode. So in order to, if you basically want to use it in the Delta mode, then it will not run. We'll see that for the, the further sessions. So coming to the further slide here. And here we can see that okay, for a particular user 103228, uh, that is Mac require challenges so there are more than one compensation information for the effective date of january 1 2017 so if you go to the success factors ui and here uh, we are already in the mcguire challengers that is 1032328 and here in we see the compensation information of this particular employee here and if you go into the history so we'll get to see that okay this particular employee has got changes on the January 1, 2017. And then there are three changes like sequence number one of three, sequence number two of three, and then the sequence number three of three. And then uh, the change, next change happened on January 1, 2018. So overall, there are four compensation time slices which are available for this particular employee. And the, the first Two, that is our January 1, 2017, sequence number being one, and also January 1, 2017, sequence number being two. So these two are basically ending on the same day itself, that is on this January 1, 2017 itself, whereas the rest of the two slices, or rather the January 1, 2017, the third sequence number, it will go till the 30th of 31st of December 2017, that is one day before the next or the upcoming time slice. And the January 1, 2018 is going till the end of the period. So that is how these slices start and the end dates have been configured for this particular employee. So if you come to add to the slide points over here, so let's try to execute first of all this particular query. And we are not putting in the URN name as of this particular time while executing this query and we'll see that okay how the time what kind of a data is being returned from the compound employee api so going to the notepad plus plus where i have already copied this particular query and if we copy this and we go into the soap ui and we paste it over here yeah and then format it and if we try running it Okay, we do not want it, this one, uh, saying so continuous, okay. So without any UN parameters, we have executed this particular query and we would be able to see the output parameters here. So we have the job compensation information one and two. So these are the only two slices which are being returned. And if you open this one, the job compensation slice and we know that okay, this has been the query is in the order of start date descending. 
so that is where the segment which started earlier would be in the lower down the order so this is the uh, end date here we can see that is 31st of december 2017 and the sequence number we see is the third one it's three so basically this is the slice which is being represented over here this particular slice and similarly if we, if we see it for the job conversation information and uh, we see the star date here so it is first of january 2018 and the sequence number being one and the end date being end of the year or end of the period so it is 31st december 9999 okay so this is how we have understood the data that is there so here in the output and this only the highest sequence number of the compensation information segment even if there are more than one compensation segment for that particular date so this is how we saw for the january 2017 how it shows up the data and then how it shows up the data for january 2018 uh, being the start dates so coming to the next slide here now if you place the urn parameter value here now let's see what happens so here we can see that for user ID 103228, there are more than one compensation information for the effective date of January 1, 2017. And for that date, the following return all the entities of the compensation information for that day. So let's try to execute this particular parameter. So let me copy the URN value, where that is a big one. So all compensation changes per day. And the URL name is result options. Okay, and it has to follow proper case as a capital. And if you try to execute it, and we see the data, and if we seek out the composition information segment, so we have got now four composition information segments. So starting from the below, it is the end date as first of January 2017 itself. And the start date is also 2017, 1st of January, and the sequence number is 1. So that is slice 1, which is there, sequence number 1, slice number 1. And then if we see over here, so we have the, we have again the end date on 1st of January 2017. Similarly, here the start date was 1st of January 2017, and the sequence number being 2 in this particular case. Now, uh, similarly, the composition information 3, so it has got the end date as 31st of December 2017 and the star date as 1st of January 2017 and the sequence number being 3. So that is one day. Uh, so the end date is one day less than the start date of the upcoming slice. So here we see the topmost, the, the most recent one composition information which has got the end date as end of period and the start date as 1st of January 2018. So with this, we are able to extract all the four time slices for the compensation information segment. So these are all the slices that we are able to extract. So now uh, let's go through the slide points. Next one. So here, let us see how the effective end date filter behaves when applied on this query with the parameter result options with all composition changes per day. So now we have the urn uh, parameter that we have already applied is the all composition changes per day. So on, and along with it, uh, in the query will modify and in the query we will place the additional uh, select parameter of effective end date wherein it will be greater than or equal to the 30th of January 2017. So with the Excel, uh, we already know that uh, if you see for the effective end date over here so with the effective end date operator is greater than or equal to so it is like effective end date is greater, is greater than or equal to given date so we know that okay uh, all the uh, slices for the uh, for the output or the output that has been returned out uh, via the other select parameters which are here in the in the query and then the output that is being that we envisage it would be returning and on top of it we have to apply the filter of effect, effective end date filter and the value being that okay all the slices whose end date 
greater than or greater than equal to the 30th of January 2017 should be outputted. So if we see our slices, so we have job composition information. So right now all the four job slices are being returned, right? So that is our query minus effective end date select parameter. So if it is returning all the four job composition slices, and now we place in that particular additional filter of effective end date. So uh, the sequence number one and the sequence number two would be filtered out because their end dates are 1st of January 2017. But the filter one for the sequence number three, its end date is 31st of December 2017, which is greater than 30th of January 2017. And uh, along with the latest record, obviously, uh, which is for the January 1, 2018. So this particular, so these two slices should only be returned. So let me go back to the SOAP UI. And herein, I'll just place the effective end date filter. So I'll just copy this effective end date filter and place it over here. Okay, so we have this is the effective end date filter, and now uh, we see that okay, uh, first of all, this was the result which was written uh, from the query wherein effective end date was not placed, so it is running all the four slices. Now, if we try to execute it with the effective end date filter placed, uh, okay, I did not use that format XML where and is also missing, okay, and I also needed to place and then let me format it. So we have the uh, so let us go to the composition information itself and we should be able to see that okay there are only two slices which have been returned not the all the four so the two slices being uh, wherein the the end date is 31st of December 2017 and it is the first of January 2017 being the started and sequence number being three and the other slice being the most recent one wherein the started itself is january 1 2018 and the end date is end of end of period all right so coming back to the side points here so with this we are able to so here in the output I list all the composition formation segment changes for that date and then those are filtered with the effective end date filter applied on top of the results obtained so that is what we saw in this particular session. So uh, coming further here, so we have got another URN parameter called configured fields only. And uh, what does it do? So if it's specified, the API only returns fields that are set to visible in the data model. So uh, right now we are getting all the fields which are out, which are there in the data model. But if we place this particular value, of result options, then we will be only getting the in the output in the component employee output the fields which are set to visible in the data model. Only those fields would be outputted, and this is more from the perspective of uh, let's say privacy because uh, on the UI, what all elements you see, and if the same elements uh, would also be exported out in the API. So the concern related to the uh, information which is which is not supposed to be displayed out to the users, whether it is an API output or the user interface uh, visibility of the fields. So that is where it can be controlled, whether those fields should be shown up or not. So having this field and without having this field, uh, I've already run this scenario. So let me show up the reports there for you. So uh, this was configured fields before and after. So if you open this particular sheet and we'll go to the configure fields report over here and we see that okay so on the left hand side this particular on the left hand side the left file which is showing up here here we will be able to see that okay this particular file is with configure fields without basically without the url parameter configured fields only so on the left hand side the output is being returned by the component employee query, uh, irrespective of whether the fields are visible or not on the UI. But on the right hand side, we can see the file where which is configured with the, with the value as configured fields uh, only for the UI parameter. 
and therein we will be able to see that okay not all the fields which are set to true would be like neither of the fields which are set to true will be visible so here in the formal name was visible in the data model so it shows up over here but when we place configure fields only so it is not shown up in the output because this is not supposed to be a field which is to be shown up on the ui or set to not like invisible in the data model now similarly is overridden that is also one of the fields and we see there are some custom fields like generic number and okay hiring not completed false or true so this is also another field which is there uh, though it is not visible on the ui but it is there along with the for the employment information segment so this way we uh, come to know that okay with these segments configured fields only placed as the result option we would only be able to see which are set to visible in the data model for the component like api response thank you